I'm going to be talking to Nicholas Gall, the Director of Distributed Energy Resources for the Canadian Renewable Energy Association, about a study he recently completed on rooftop solar in Ontario. So welcome to the interview, Nicholas. Thanks so much, Merkham. Great to be here with you. Well, like, why don't we start with an overview of the study, please? Sure. So Canria commissioned uh, Power Advisory, who's the energy consultancy uh, looking at power markets across North America, to take a look at what would be the impact of essentially doubling the amount of solar installed behind the meter specifically, so on rooftops, uh, in homes and businesses across Ontario. So uh, we looked at a couple of different scenarios, one uh, ranging from uh, sort of the current rate of very gradual uptake of of net metered solar, and then another, uh, a couple more looking at sort of more progressive and ambitious scenarios. And, uh, and what was the impact of this increased uptake of, of solar uh, from a whole system standpoint? So how does this impact um, the, the merit order of, of what generation is dispatched in the Ontario system? Um, and how does this uh, impact exposure to carbon prices? Uh, the cost of uh, of that gas generation, and um, and also uh, what is the impact on uh, the required infrastructure build out to accommodate that generation? So essentially, uh, we found that with a, with a doubling of Ontario's current solar capacity, um, there's actually very very significant savings that can be realized at a whole system level. Uh, savings we estimate to be in the range of $250 million a year by 2030. And where are those savings coming from, Nicholas? It's essentially coming from three different places. So first of all, um, we're assuming exposure to the $170 a ton federal carbon price um, for all fossil fuel electricity generation in Ontario. That's not currently the case today, but we're expecting uh, that there will be carbon price exposure for, for all fossil fuel electricity generation by 2030. We think that's a reasonable assumption. Um, so certainly uh, when you're not um, combusting uh, fossil fuels to generate electricity, there's no inherent exposure to the carbon price associated with that generation. So very, very significant savings there. And, and those savings obviously increase as the carbon price per ton uh, accelerates uh, over time. Second savings is just from the sheer cost of, uh, of, of fuel, of natural gas, uh, to be burned in, in turbines to generate electricity. Um, we know that, uh, that uh, well, essentially, we're, we're looking at solar as, um, as a demand reduction. So there's, there's, no, um, there's no cost in terms of, of fuel associated with that. So that's a pure savings, both in terms of the fuel and uh, and um, the carbon price exposure associated with that fuel. And then the third uh, savings stems from the avoided need to procure uh, backup capacity using Ontario's capacity mechanism. So because we're looking at demand diminishing during those peak periods when solar in Ontario is, is generating the most, uh, we don't need to procure as much emergency backup generation uh, or um, demand response to, to meet those peaks. And, and that translates into lower uh, capacity market fearing prices. So three savings essentially, collectively, they translate into uh, tens to potentially over $250 million in savings per year, depending on how much solar you assume is built out. Now you had some numbers for the uh, the number of uh, homes that would have to have rooftop solar every year and other like big box stores, and I was looking at the Lazard levelized cost of energy estimates and rooftop solar for residential uh, applications are still you know they're pretty high. Uh, about 150 bucks a megawatt hour. Uh, but for industrial business applications like a mall, for instance, it's quite a bit lower. Did that factor into you know, the calculations at all? Uh, because I would have just assumed that business, commercial, industrial applications would be more of that than rooftop because of the lower costs. We're, we're not actually looking at, uh, at the costs borne by 
um, those who install solar at all. So um, we're assuming that that's sort of, we're treating that essentially as uh, exogenous within the analysis. Um, businesses and homeowners want to install solar for all sorts of reasons, uh, and they're already doing so. They're going to continue doing so. Um, and it's, uh, I think we're, we're trending toward an era of, of mass adoption in, in the technology. Um, the payback periods for, for commercial solar, you're absolutely right, much better than for, for residential. Um, I think for, for uh, commercial, you'd probably be looking at roughly a 10-year break-even, uh, depending on what you assume the uh, electricity price is going to increase. Um, for residential, probably a bit more than 12 years, but uh, it's coming down all the time as, as costs get cheaper. Um, however, as I said, we're, we're not really sort of comparing the cost of, of installing solar versus uh, what's, what the sort of broader dynamics are in terms of the whole uh, power market in Ontario. We're just treating solar as pure demand reduction because it, all generation is being consumed behind the meter or being exported to the grid at the retail rate. Uh, and it's not like a market participant per se. Uh, how does solar fit with Ontario's demand curve? And I, I understand uh, specifically that during the summer, it's air conditioning that, that is responsible for, for peak demand. But what about other seasons as well? Well, you're absolutely right. Uh, Ontario is extremely uh, a summer peaking jurisdiction. Uh, so the summer peak is about 25% higher than the winter peak. Um, and that's factoring in the fact that we already have you know, a good amount of behind the meter solar that is bringing down that peak. Um, so the peak is absolutely being driven by need for, for space cooling. Um, and, uh, and that's going to go up over time in part due to climate change, in part due to population growth. Um, so solar is very, very well aligned with that. Uh, and also, and when you look at sort of the, the generation profile of solar on an annual basis, about two thirds of the total generation over the course of a year is going to be produced during the summer. Um, so what's happening during the other three months of the year is uh, I would say less material, but um, I mean, definitely as a general rule, um, electricity demand is, is highest during the day when, when people are awake and using electricity. So there is an inherent alignment there, um, whether it matches up as perfectly as during the summer, I mean, debatable, but uh, the other important factor to keep in mind is um, the potential for consumers to, to switch when they use energy as well. Um, and that's definitely something uh, Kenria would support in terms of cost reflective billing and, and these sorts of things. Now, we've done some work here at Energy Media on the uh, infrastructure required to build out electricity generation and distribution uh, over the next 30 years. And economists uh, like uh, Dr. Chris Bataille are telling us, you know, the, the modelers are saying Canada is going to need two to three times as much electricity. That implies a lot of investment in infrastructure. And my understanding is your study shows that rooftop solar, uh, both residential and business commercial, would save Ontario having to invest in that infrastructure. Could you explain that, please? Yeah, absolutely. So as I, as I said, I mean, solar is very well aligned with when uh, Ontarians are using the most electricity, uh, which is primarily during late summer afternoons. Um, I, I mean, during the day and summer in general. Um, so essentially, we have an electricity system that is built to accommodate demand at uh, when it's highest. So that's, you know, these transmission lines uh, are not running at full capacity uh, in many cases, more than sort of five to 10% of the year. Um, so by, by diminishing um, peak demand in, uh, in that way, like through, through behind the meter measures like installing solar, um, we're able to realize like quite significant savings by reducing um, infrastructure that's built to accommodate these, these very high peak periods. And that's true of the, uh, the need to procure backup uh, generation capacity through the capacity mechanism, um, as well as the need to build new poles and wires to, to move that generation around. Nicholas, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate your insights. Thank you. Great to speak with you, Marco.